So what are those things where we get a function that we see and we can pass in something like star args and star star quags? What does that mean and why should you use it or should you even use it? Those are the things I'm gonna try and help you out with in this video. So I have a function here on my screen, which is very, very simple. It just does one thing. It's gonna take in this name argument that we've given it and it's gonna print that out. So if I run this function now, print names and we call Ted here, good old Ted. And let's run this. You'll see that we do, obviously we're gonna get Ted printed out on the screen like we expected to. But what happens if we wanted to actually pass in another name? Let's say we wanted to print out uh, Ted and also his mate Fred. Well, we could put name two in here, would this work? We could try and print both of these out at the same time. Uh, yes, that does work. But what happens if we have more and more and more and more? We can't keep defining this in here. That's just not going to work for us. It's not going to be the best method. Now watch, happen watch what happens if I remove this name two and name two from here. And I put a star in front of our name here. Now what this means is that this, uh, this name variable, this parameter, is now going to collect all of the what could be positional arguments for our function and return them to us down here. So it's basically accepting in multiple different positional arguments that we give this function and then giving us access to them inside the function. I've been using the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant, for a while now and I found it to be super helpful in filling in those gaps in my knowledge as a self-taught developer. My favourite so far has been the algorithms class. It's all done interactive and hands-on, which means you can actually really see what's going on. You can move the blocks around and you can see how what you put in at the start affects what comes out in the output. There's also some great Python classes too if you're enjoying this video, but it's not just computer science. There are thousands of classes across CompSci, maths and regular science with more content updated regularly too. I find that just 30 minutes or so a day going through these really helps me improve my problem solving skills which are absolutely vital for me in the work that I do and for whatever work that you do I'm sure you'll find a place where STEM uh, can really benefit you too like maybe just some basic data analysis which I think a lot of people miss out on when they are working and employed or maybe then they're running their own business. So if this sounds like something that you really think you might enjoy, I'd urge you to go and check it out. So to get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash John Watson Rooney or visit the link in the description below. And the first 200 people will also receive 20% off a premium annual subscription to Brilliant. So thank you very much for Brilliant for sponsoring this video and let's get back to it. Let's have a look what the actual type is. Now you might be, uh, you might know this by just looking down into the terminal. You'll know that this is actually a tuple. So this returns a tuple to us from the positional arguments the, uh, that were collected with this star here. Now, because it's a tuple, we actually have access to them individually, which we can then do something with like this. Uh, we can also pass in basically as many as you like. Let's have Dave and Mike as well. So we're gonna have these all now neatly in a tuple for us to have access to. But what is this star actually doing? Well, let's have a look. We can actually see that what the star is gonna do is it's going to uh, be able to unpack anything from an iterator. So let's have a look at just printing out with the normal print function, not the uh, bogus one that I created. And let's print out the name here. Uh, let's just print out Mike again. So this was not using this function. Now we're using the main print function. And it's worth looking at this pop-up actually from VS Code because you'll see that it actually has the star in front of values. Uh, and that is because it accepts uh, everything that you give it. You just keep giving it things. It keeps printing them out. Uh, forever. Uh, so let's print this out and uh, we get exactly what you'd expect. But if I put a star in front of here, what it's going to do is because this is a string which is iterable, it's actually going to give us each of the letters individually. Now what happens if we made this into a tuple, for example? Uh, let's have uh, Mike, let's call back Fred and Ted as well. Again with the star here, we get them outside of the tuple because this has basically unpacked it for us. And this works with lists as well. But what happens if we were gonna say, let's use the keyword arguments? Uh, now, before we move on to that, actually, I've noticed that I've called this name here. Generally, you see this as args inside 
uh, Python functions. It's kind of like the standard way of, of saying it, I suppose. Uh, it's You can call it whatever you like. This is just the way, a general way of doing it. So what you might see is you might see this, quarks. So this is now going to represent any keyword arguments that we give it. But what's a keyword argument? Well, if you've ever seen a function from a module that you've imported or you've pip installed and it says you need to give it this specific piece of data, then you'll understand what that is. I'm actually going to show you one of those here. So this is the um, requests uh, package for Python, one that we all use all the time. And here's the standard function to make a request. Uh, now this is really interesting because we have the method, which is actually, of course, required. So that's why this is here with no star object, because this is a required parameter, along with the URL. That makes total sense, right? If you want to make a request to a server, you need to have the type of request, the HTTP verb that you're going to be using, plus the URL that you want to make that request to. The next thing that we see is these star star keyword args, the key, the quarks, the keyword arguments. Now, if you've ever used this, you'll know that you can pass in extra things like headers and cookies and bits of data. And that is exactly what a keyword argument is. And you'll see, here we are, you can see like headers, optional dictionary to send, cookies, optional dictionary. So this is how this actually collects all of that information. And then this function works out what you're trying to do based on all of these arguments that you give it. So let's come back to our code now. Let's just remove this one and we'll do something with this so we can see how uh, this star argument actually, uh, this star operator uh, unpacks the uh, dictionary for us. So let's have our headers, which is just from our last example. And let's just have that as a test string and then we'll have name and that can be our, our good friend uh, Ted over here. So when we run this, what we're gonna get is we're gonna get the keys back because this is essentially unpacking that and it's giving us the keys. Very much like if we were to try and do something like, let's just call this my dict for now. And then let's just do for uh, i in my dict, please. Print i. So this is like looping through. This is basically doing the same thing. So now we're gonna get the same two keys out that we would expect. Now, obviously when we're working into this function, we have to use double star because if we the star is already uh, taken to represent the positional arguments, the, the, the arguments that come out as a tuple. Now, the keyword arguments are the ones that we would pass in, like I just showed you. So let's go ahead and do print names like this. And we'll have the first one, which was the keyword. We're going to call this one name is equal to uh, Ted. And then our name two can be equal to Fred. Now, if I change this to print out the type for keyword arguments and print out the keyword arguments at the same time, we'll get back here a class of dict and it is returning a dictionary to us with the name as our key as we've shown here. So it's interesting to note the relationship and how these work together. So first of all, you'll see that because I didn't give any positional arguments, we didn't actually get any back. Uh, we just got an empty tuple. There was nothing there, no data for it, but we did get that empty tuple back. But we had some keyword arguments, so then we had access to those. What do you think would happen if I put name in here? Well, this would be a required argument, okay? So this is a required parameter for this function. But I'm already specifying name down here. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna get this name, which I'm not doing anything within the function at the moment, I'll add that in just a second, but it's saying, right, this is now this, and the rest of our keyword arguments are this, which is why you only get this down here. So it's worth understanding and messing around to really work out how the interaction between your required and your args and keyword arguments work. For example, if I change this from name to person, we now don't have a match for this person argument because I'm not giving one here. So it's saying I get an error. If I pass that in like this, we're now going to get that here. Uh, we don't have a printout because I didn't put it in there. But you see, we don't get the error and we still get this back. So you just need to understand how these all work together. Um, the most common places that you're going to see this is in either in functions from uh, modules that you're importing or perhaps you're 
uh, working with some data that you're going to be putting and unpacking into a database. You'll see this quite a lot as well. Or when you're using decorator or wrapper functions, because when you create a wrapper function uh, for a decorator or otherwise, you can actually modify the keyword arguments within that function that you pass along. So hopefully you now have a bit of a better understanding of how to use the star args and star star quags in a function. It's something that you're probably not going to use an awful lot, but if you get a good idea now of how it works, it's something that you can be ready for and used if you need to. If you've enjoyed this video, I think you're going to enjoy this one here where we talk about data classes, which is a really cool way of working with data within Python.